way climate alarmists intentionally deceive you is by changing the starting date of their graphs so as to suit their agenda. I'll explain. The starting date top applies to almost everything the alarmists do, but we'll start with one example, Arctic sea ice. This is a graph of the Arctic sea ice extent since 1979, and what matters is the red one, that is the September, the end of the summer graph, and it shows a continual decline in the extent of the sea ice. This is the alarmist graph. So why did they choose 1979 as the starting date? Well, you can guess. That's because there was a very high level of sea ice then. So let's now take that graph and attach it to another graph that shows the history prior to 1979. This graph shows, and it's from official IPC sources in 1990, that the actual sea ice extent was far lower just a few years before 1979 in 1975. And it is claimed these are measured by the same system by satellite. So they hid the 1975 low sea ice extent. But let's extend further back in time, not using satellite, but traditional well-tested methods to observe Arctic sea ice extent. Now the full deception is revealed. The ice extent was much lower earlier in the 1950s when the actual CO2 levels were considered very safe. There is simply no relationship shown here between the extent of Arctic sea ice and the CO2 level. The red line in this graph shows the mean Arctic sea ice extent for the last 15 years. And as you can see, it's pretty level. For another example, let's take wildfires in the USA. Look at the All Regions graph. It's terrible. Growing wildfires blamed on climate change. But if you don't start at that low 1984 figure for wildfires and look at the history of wildfires in the USA, this is what you get. There were 10 or 15 times the amount of acreage lost when CO2 levels were super low. 